I love edgy characters. If a character laughs like this, <laughs> Chances are that they're probably my favorite. They're over the top, they're excessive, and that's what I love. However, many don't like edgy characters. If you don't like a character with questionable ethics, that's perfectly valid. However, if you think a character is bad simply because they're edgy, you're wrong. In this video, I want to discuss at length what makes a good edgy character and what makes a bad edgy character, because I am sick and tired of the stigma surrounding the edgelord archetype. <laughs> oh, and uh, spoilers for these series. Let's begin with an example of a well-written edgelord protagonist, Raiden. I am lightning. The rain transformed. Specifically the version of Raiden from Metal Gear Rising, since that's when he's at his edgiest. Motivations are arguably the most important part of a character in any piece of media, maybe only rivaled by design. Raiden's great because his design is a complete contrast to his motivations. It's cold, it's sharp, one eye is covered by an eye patch, and the other is bright red. Everything about this guy's design screams hardcore edgelord. And yet, Raiden is actually a huge softy deep down. One of the main reasons Raiden embarks on his journey in the first place is because he can't stand seeing children relive the same military training that traumatized him as a child. I chose this. They're kids, you son of a bitch. They're kids are cruel. Which is a pretty heroic reason. Not only this, but Raiden is shown at many times to consider the feelings of his opponents. At one point in the game, he begins to hear the thoughts of the enemies he's been slaughtering en masse, and has a mental breakdown so intense that he can no longer bring himself to fight. This humanization is important for any character, heroic or evil. A character without good motivations is essentially just a plot device. A guy who kills for the right reasons is a hundred times more endearing than a guy who kills just because. Which leads me to an example of a bad edgy character. Meat, not important. I could spend another minute or so explaining his motivations like I did with Raiden, but you know, I don't want to speak for not important. So I'll let him explain his motivations himself. I just fucking hate this world and these human worms feasting on its carcass. My whole life is just cold, bitter hatred. Oh, oh. Pretty endearing stuff, right? Yeah, in case you haven't heard of this little hidden gem, this guy comes from a game called Hatred that released back in 2015. The game was on Steam Greenlight for only a few hours before being taken down, which says a lot when you consider the type of slop that's uploaded to Steam every day now. Hatred is also one of the few games to ever receive an adult-only rating, which is even more of an accomplishment when you consider the fact that the majority of games slapped with an adult-only rating received it due to excessively lewd content. Anyway, the rest of Hatred's story isn't much better than its intro. He kills a bunch of people, finds a nuclear reactor, and blows up his entire town. With all that in consideration, I think it's pretty safe to say that Hatred is an edgy, violent game, starring an edgy, violent man. But if you think about it, Metal Gear Rising is arguably way more violent. Sure, Hatred has a protagonist shoot or beat people to death, that's violent, but these methods of execution have been present in the media for ages now. Metal Gear Rising, on the other hand, has you dismember your opponents in a multitude of grotesque ways. You can chop people in half, cut off their limbs, and let them bleed out. At one point, you rip out a guy's heart and crush it right in front of him. So why is Metal Gear Rising rated M, while Hatred is rated adult only? It all comes circling back to motivations. Both Raiden and Not Important take great joy in executing their foes. However, we have to consider why they're killing people, and who they're killing. Raiden's enemies consist of war criminals, terrorists, and corrupt politicians. Additionally, all of Raiden's opponents are willing combatants, egging him on to do his absolute worst, even on their deathbed. It's hard to feel sympathy for them when they're quite literally asking for it. You can be cooler than that, Jack. A good time, Jack. Meanwhile, Not Important is killing innocent civilians and police officers simply doing their job. Nobody he kills deserves it, and all of them are unwilling combatants, shown begging for their lives moments before Not Important executes them. This isn't good, Edgy, this is just, like, weird and psychotic. It's pretty obvious which of these games would be worse to put in the hands of a child. Neither of them should be for the record, but at least Metal Gear Rising's story wouldn't create a school shooter. It might create one or two men who fight in high heels, though. So, the verdict? To create a good edgy protagonist, you simply need to give them understandable motivations for their edginess. Hell, their motivations don't even need to be heroic. They just need to make sense. Take Buddy in Lisa the Joyful, for example. Buddy's goal is to slaughter all the warlords in Olathe so that she will be perceived as the strongest person alive. She kills essential people in this world, some that don't even mean her any harm. And she spits on the grave of her own father and adoptive brother. This character might seem excessively edgy, but she's still well written. 
and that's because her motivations are understandable. Buddy is the only remaining woman in a world full of perverted old men. If she doesn't make it clear she'll kill anyone at a moment's notice, she'll be enslaved and used as an object. Additionally, Buddy is both a teenager and suffering from substance abuse. When you have hormones, drugs, and a legitimate reason to fear all men fueling you, I think it's pretty understandable why you'd resort to killing anyone who crosses your path. These motivations aren't heroic, but they are understandable. So now that we understand what makes a good edgelord protagonist, I think it's about time we move on to what makes a good edgelord antagonist. This one was a little hard to decide on, because most antagonists are edgelords by default, and it's completely in character for an antagonist to be excessively evil. So how on earth will you manage to make a bad edgelord antagonist? Well, Breaking Bad managed to find a way. Yes, believe it or not, I am about to criticize Breaking Bad. I know my previous videos have a nauseating amount of Breaking Bad memes present, but that doesn't mean I can't acknowledge the shortcomings the show has. I digress though. Breaking Bad is some of the absolute worst edgelord representation in all of media, and those representatives are the cousins, or the twins, or whatever you want to name them. They have actual names in the show, but nobody bothers using them. As most of you know, there can always be too much of a good thing. Food is great, but if you eat too much, you'll end up looking like Nikocado. The internet is great, but if you use it too much, you'll probably end up some breed of mentally ill. And of course, edgy characters are great, but if you lean too much into the edginess, you might ruin what makes them good in the first place. The worst part about these characters is that they're not even horribly written. They have more than understandable motivations for being edgelords, I mean, they were born into the cartel for god's sake. However, like I explained just a moment earlier, there can always be too much of a good thing. Their first real scene in the show is just so, so cartoonishly evil. A kid notices they have skulls on the bottom of their boots, so they silently kill everyone in the car and then the driver so as to not leave any witnesses. This is fine, typical cartel stuff. However, the writers of the show really want to make it clear that you shouldn't mess with these guys, so they go completely overboard. The twins have a smoke, set the car on fire with their cigarette, and slowly walk away from the explosion. Like, stupidly slow. Like, so slow that these two would 100% be feeling the fire on their backs and pick up the pace in real life. They just try so hard to be edgy and cool that it just loops back around to being lame. This isn't even their worst offense. No, that would come from their final scene. Here they have Hank dead to rights. I mean, it doesn't get any more cut and dry than this. Hank is severely wounded, on the ground, bleeding out, and Marco has his gun pointed at him. There's absolutely zero reason a cartel member wouldn't just end him then and there. But these two aren't just any cartel members, they're edgelord cartel members. So Marco feels the need to make his death more dramatic, and he slowly meanders back to his car to grab an axe. He makes sure to drag it out too. All of these theatrics give Hank enough time to reach for a stray bullet nearby, reload his gun, and shoot Marco just before he swings his axe. You can't make this shit up. These two fail to carry out their mission because they're so edgy. They die because they're too edgy. Maduxen, aren't edgelords supposed to be excessive and over the top? And to that I say, to an extent, I don't find it believable that two mid to high level cartel members would take their sweet time killing a DEA agent out in public. Call me crazy, but I would think that they'd want to make it quick so that they could get the hell out of there and avoid compromising themselves. Shit just kind of happened the way it did for the sake of progressing Gus's plan and to put Hank out of commission for a couple of months. So, like I said earlier, the twins ended up being nothing more than a plot device, really. Though their contribution to Breaking Bad is pretty inconsequential to the quality of the show, the twins have caused irreparable damage to the edgelord community. We're in absolute shambles over here. You two are the reason why people think edgy equals bad. We need an example of a good edgelord antagonist. Oh, it's... Adachi. Adachi. Adachi! Yes, this has become yet another one of the many white man video essays on YouTube featuring Toru Adachi. Sue me! But if so many people want to talk about this character, then surely they did something right with his writing, right? Don't get me wrong, I don't believe Persona 4 to be the pinnacle of fiction, but I do think Adachi is an endearing character nonetheless. He spent the entire game LARPing as this absolutely clueless dork, but once he's figured out, he goes full mask off and just completely indulges in the edgelord he was the entire time. That's awesome, but why? What could possibly have caused this guy to break bad and become a serial killer? Well, Adachi's motivations for killing people is that his life sucked and that he was bored. And that's a motivation so dumb, so simple, so edgy, so selfish that... 
it's surprisingly easy to get behind. Think about it, if some random basement dweller with zero ambition in life was suddenly granted the power to kill people with zero consequences, what do you think he would do? Well, no need to imagine, because Persona 4 presents both paths of the basement dweller in its main story. Both the protagonist and Adachi have the same starting point. Both are dropped into a small town in the middle of nowhere with no friends other than some guy named Dojima. You as the protagonist obviously go on to befriend all the people around you, while Adachi kills some women and then meanders around Walmart for a couple of months. I honestly think Adachi is way more relatable to most Persona players than the protagonist is, and perhaps in a way is supposed to serve as a cautionary tale to those who lash out at the world instead of picking themselves up and making the best of their life. He's like not important, except instead of succeeding in his killing spree, some teenagers come out of nowhere to beat some sense into him. No, really, after his defeat, Adachi takes it as a lesson learned that seething over how certain people are born luckier isn't going to make his own life any better. Perhaps I'm rambling a bit aimlessly instead of getting to the point of what makes him a good Edgelord antagonist compared to the twins, though. I think if I had to put my finger on what exactly makes me like him so much more than twins, is simply how memorable he is. His obsession with cabbages, his infamous hatred of bitches and whores, his whole rambling rant about society, all these and more come together to make a character that is still discussed 15 years later. Meanwhile, if the twins weren't part of the most highly rated show of all time, They'd never even be brought up these days. They're such nothing characters, especially compared to the likes of their family. This was probably my most disjointed and meaningless video essay yet, but at the same time, I really do hope this inspires some to write more edgy characters. Because I really do love them when they're done right. It feels like these days, most, including myself, stray away from writing something too edgy for fear of being cringe. However, the most cringe thing you can do in all actuality is let the fear of being cringe stop you from writing a character you genuinely want to write. If everyone simultaneously agreed to never write a mean, offensive character ever again, then all dialogue would sound like this. I just move shit. With my freaking mind! <laughs> okay, that is something I do now. I do magic, talk sentient cups, kill jacked up beasts. You know what? I'll probably fly next. Now you're just being ridiculous. What the fuck is you what talking about? Thank you all for watching. If you enjoyed the video, maybe consider liking and subscribing. And if you hated it, explain why in the comments below so that I can improve in future uploads. Either way, I'm gonna go practice my maniacal laugh. So I'm out of here. See ya! Ha 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 